Hey guys, welcome to GIMP Essential Training on the Mac, PC, and Linux. This course is not only meant for beginners, but anybody who wants to learn something new with GIMP. In this first video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the GIMP interface and get you familiar with some of the layout options. Just a note for Mac users, instead of using the control plus the key for a shortcut, you should be using the command plus the key for a shortcut. For example, to copy something in Windows, I hold Control and press C. In Mac, I would hold Command and press C. So just keep that in mind as you watch these videos. When you first open GIMP, your workspace should look a lot like mine. The toolbox is on the left, the layers are on the right, and the center should either have your image or it should be blank. If for some reason your toolbox or your layers tab are not there, you can easily get them back. In Windows, if you hold Control and press B, you will get the toolbox back. If you're using Mac, press Command and B. And to get the Layers panel back in Windows, press Control and L. In Mac, press Command and L. So now your workspace should look like mine. Let's talk about the different parts of the workspace. On the left is your toolbox, which contains all your creation and editing tools for GIMP. On your right side, you should have your Layers panel. It's essential that you have quick and easy access to all your layers while using GIMP. I want to talk about the canvas now to avoid confusion later. The canvas is where you work on your pictures or your layers. Just remember that the canvas is not the same as your picture or your layers. In fact, the canvas isn't actually attached to anything except your workspace. See what happens when I move my image off of my canvas? See that I'm exposing the canvas below? You can actually edit the size of your canvas through this image canvas size. We'll get into this later when we're resizing our canvas. Let's talk about zooming. The two easiest ways to zoom is to either press plus and minus on your keyboard or hold the control key and scroll your mouse wheel up and down. Mac users hold command and scroll your mouse wheel. Let's talk about panning around on your image and changing your viewpoint. If I zoom in to do some detail work, it's not entirely obvious how to get over here to the other parts of my image. You can slide these slider bars, or you can come down to the bottom right hand corner and you see this four way arrow. If you click it and hold your mouse button, you'll notice that it gives you a little preview of your image. And if you move your mouse around, you can move around quickly to any part on your image. And the final way is my favorite way. If you click the middle mouse wheel like a button, you can click and drag your viewpoint around. It makes it easier to have your mouse stay close to where you're working. And that's why I like it so much. I wanted to talk a little bit about customizing these panels. You can place whatever tab you'd like down here as well as over here by simply clicking and dragging the tab and dropping it in all the highlighted areas. You can't see the highlighted areas because of my screen capture program, but trust me, there's a lot of different areas that you can drop this. If I click this arrow, you'll see I have the add tab option. You can choose from the list. I suggest using the brushes tab also. So now you have the layers and the brushes tab easily accessible. This will let you easily change the brush tip. A couple more things I wanted to point out was this ruler along the top and the left edge. This ruler measures in pixels. So if you follow this black arrow as I move my mouse down inside the image, that arrow will follow how many pixels left and right and also how many pixels up and down. This is good for doing precise work. If you want to be really precise, you can click the ruler and drag a guide down from the top or the left, and you can place these wherever you want in your image. In fact, if you need more than one, you can get as many as you need. And when you're done with them, simply drag and drop them off the screen, and they disappear. The guides are nice if you have to be very precise in your image. If you'll notice on your toolbox, there's a little X. And on your layers panel, there's another X. This makes it very easy to accidentally close your panels and have to bring them back. 
it's not very convenient if you have to redo all the tabs that you had customized so what we're going to do is change to something called single window mode so that these panels can no longer be freely moved if you go to windows single window mode and now we can no longer accidentally close the toolbox or the layers panel in fact if you're not happy with the size that it automatically picks for you, you there's this invisible barrier between the toolbox and the canvas and you can click and drag and resize these panels I recommend about five wide on the on the toolbox and you can do the same thing with the layers panel so once you get these exactly the way you want them you're ready to start using GIMP.